in the book of Galatians, from the King James Bible. The Apostle Paul writing to the Galatians, in verse 6, wrote, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that that ye received, let him be accursed. The Apostle Paul read, wrote this 2,000 years ago. It looks like that sadly this is still happening. If we don't preach the gospel of the grace of God, if we don't receive the gospel of the grace of God, what kind of gospel are we receiving? A perverted one. He says in verse 6, I marvel that you so soon remove from him the called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Who called the Galatians into the grace of Christ? Into the gospel of the grace of God? Paul. Oh. No Peter, no James, but Paul. Let's go in the book of Acts, in chapter 20, verse 24, where the Apostle Paul wrote, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So we see here that the Apostle Paul is talking about the gospel of the grace of God. He's not talking about the gospel of the kingdom. When Paul was preaching, there were still twelve apostles, Peter, James, John, the twelfth Matthias, who took the place of Judas to commit suicide, was there. They were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. How come Paul is not preaching the same gospel? Because he's not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Even though preacher teaches uh, personalities of this uh, denominational world, they think he did, he didn't. He didn't preach, repent, confess sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, whatever it is, and do works of, you know, that prove that you really repent of this. He didn't preach this kind of gospel, he preached, as we see here, the gospel that he received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now, this gospel of the grace of God is also defined in Romans in chapter 1, verse 16, when it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Peter, James, and John, they never preached the gospel of Christ. They preached the gospel of the kingdom. They preached to Israel, to the Jews only. Christ, the Messiah King. They preached the cross, the crucifixion, as a murder indictment. You can see this in Acts 2. When the Peter, you know, the day of Pentecost preached that sermon, very famous. 
It's talking about the end times, the last days of Israel. And the letters that Peter, James, John, the Hebrew epistles, the book of Hebrews, Revelation, Jude, that are in the Bible, they are addressing Israel. They're not addressing us. We have an apostle, Apostle Paul, who preaches to us, and we should take this and preach this, the gospel of the grace of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we read something extremely important to understand he said for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of god a house no man with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan <clears throat> earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven it so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. That mortality might be sold up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are torn in the body, <clears throat> we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to, and to be present with the Lord. Before we labor that, whether present or absent, we might be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone might receive the things done in His body, According to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. <clears throat> and I trust also they are manifest in your consciences. For we commit not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf. That we may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance, not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And he died for all, the day which lived should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yet though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him no more. Now listen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is not born again. He is a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The body of Christ is the new creature. The body of Christ did not start in Acts 2 or the day of Pentecost. The body of Christ, the church, which is his body, did not start in Acts 2. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Which are the old things? It's quite evident. It is the dispensation present to the dispensation in which we live now. We're going to talk about this dispensation. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputed their trespasses unto them, 
and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The body of Christ, the church, which is his body, as a ministry and a word of reconciliation. In fact, it says in verse 20, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. My dear friends, if you think that this is, is what is written in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you really need to pay attention and to heed, obey the commandment in 2 Timothy 2, 15, where it's clearly written Study to show that self approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is important, it is necessary, it is fundamental that you and I, when we approach this wonderful book, the word of truth, the word of God, the King James Bible, for the English speaking people, we study according to this principle, dividing truth from truth, dividing what is concerning the nation of Israel of the past and the future, and what is concerning the new creature, the body of Christ, the church, which is his body. And understand that why Jesus Christ has a ministry to Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven has a ministry to us, the body of Christ. And what Jesus Christ ministered to Israel through the twelve apostles, the Lord Jesus Christ ministered to us through the Apostle Paul, who wrote 13 letters, Roman to Philemon. And we, ha we have to understand that we are in the dispensation of the grace of God, that we preach Jesus Christ together with Paul, of course, instructed by Paul, how, not according to the red letters, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but as you can read in Romans 16, 25, when it says, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now it's made manifest. My dear friend, it's important to understand that while the prophetic program that occupies 95% of the Bible has been written from the beginning, and so you have all these prophets until practically the first coming of Christ to Israel, his incarnation, his life, his ministry, and then the, the calling commission of the twelve, they go and preach the gospel of the kingdom to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not to Gentiles. Then we have another part of the Bible, the mystery program, the revelation of the mystery, and that's the mission of the body of Christ to preach reconciliation, to preach the gospel of the grace of God, to make all men see the fellowship, the revelation of the mystery, that we are in a fellowship, in the fellowship of his son. Even though people use this expression, relationship with Jesus, the Bible doesn't support that, but talks about the fellowship of his son. I will go now. I hope that this helps you to understand. To Ephesians in chapter 3, 
where we read from verse 1 for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word this is the point I stop one moment and I want to ask you together with Paul here have you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to Paul towards us or are you still following Jesus according to the red letters are you trying actually to follow Jesus because nobody can follow Jesus according to the red letters impossible all right Jesus Christ is in heaven at the right hand of the Father he's risen praise God he's alive he's you cannot follow him into the kingdom. The kingdom is not coming. Israel has rejected the king and the kingdom. The, the kingdom didn't come, did it? And, surprise, surprise, in the book of Matthew 15, 24, Christ said very clearly, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The four Gospels contain the ministry of Christ, the earthly ministry to the nation of Israel, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, by declaration, by words of the Lord himself. I'm not making this up, it's written here. You can go and check on your King James, Matthew 15. 24, but he answered said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when he sent them to preach the gospel of the kingdom, he said very clearly not to go in the way of the Gentiles, not to go to the Samaritans, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. With this glorious gospel of the kingdom and the signs were coming and following. It's the same thing happened on Pentecost when they received this promise, this power of the Holy Ghost was to announce the kingdom to Israel. But Israel has rejected the king and the kingdom. And we are now in a situation in which we need to understand that things have changed because when Israel rejecting the king in the kingdom, stoning Stephen, blaspheming the Holy Ghost, all right, came to a point where practically fell, diminished, and then practically is unsaved, is blind. The Lord called Paul because that was a mystery. That was something that was a mystery hidden God. And gave him the revelation of the mystery. And gave him the dispensation of the grace of God. And we find in, in Paul's letters. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The sound doctrine. The instructions. For the body of Christ. The new creature. The church which is his body. That's why Paul is asking then. And we should ask now to you people that go to church. Have you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God given to Paul towards us? Because he says, How that by revelation he may known unto me the mystery. The Apostle Paul did not go to school in Bible school with Peter, James, and John. He didn't learn anything from them. This guy, he was solo Tarsus, he was persecuting. The little flock led by Peter and James and John. On the way to Damascus, something extraordinary happened. You can read in Acts 9, this great appearing, this glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven and the Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, gets saved in an extraordinary way. No one gets saved like that. In other words, you, you're not going to have the same experience. But he gets saved by grace, just like we get saved now by grace without us doing nothing but believing what the Lord has accomplished let's go on reading 
If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word out that by revelation he may known unto me the mystery, as I wrote for a few words, whereby when you read, study, read, ye might understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. You understand that God had a mystery hidden God. You don't find any, not even a hint of this mystery in the prophetic program. So don't go look for this mystery in the prophetic program or in the four gospel. There is not even a hint because it was hid in God. That's why the apostle now they writes 13 letters, Roman to Philemon says, whereby when you read, ye might understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. These holy apostles and prophets are in fact the new apostles and prophets. Is the apostle Paul, and then there is Silvanus, Barnabas, Timotheus, Titus, and so forth. The prophets, there are prophets at a certain point because while the Lord is assembling this new creature, instructing, giving the, 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 the doctrine, there is a confirmation by the Spirit through the prophets. Yes, it is like that. Amen. Praise the Lord and so forth. But now we have the book fulfilled. You know, the Apostle Paul is the one who fulfilled the word of God. So, our responsibility now is to come and study this book, rightly divided, and understand the mystery, understand the knowledge that Paul has in the mystery of Christ, which in other regions was not made known unto the sons of men, it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So in the body of Christ, Jews and Gentile, Gentiles, they come into a new creature. They become a new creature. Members in particular, bones of his bones, flesh of his flesh, of the body of Christ, the new creature. I can't stress it enough. We're not born again because we were never born of God. Only Israel could be born again because they were already Israel, my son, you know. In Exodus. But the point of the matter is the Gentiles should be fellow hers and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. Please notice, underline, memorize the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, says Paul, who am less than the least of all saints, I'm in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, people accuse Paul to be proud, boastful. <laughs> this is not a proud person talking like this. Is this grace given? Grace, grace, dispensation of grace of God, grace. The letters of Paul open with grace and peace and close with grace and peace. The term grace is present many times in the Bible, majority in the letters of Paul, to him has been given. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me, by the effectual working of his power unto me, when less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid, please pay attention, in God. Chapter 3 of Ephesians verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. If Satan and his course of devils would have known 
that by the cross of Christ, God was going to form a new creature, the body of Christ, and bring salvation to people that otherwise cannot be saved, us, the Gentiles, as well, the Jews, because no one has been ever saved by obeying the law. We're all sinners. He would not crucify the Lord of glory. He would avoid at all costs. But that's the wisdom of God. It was a misreading God. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. You see, to the intent, there is a purpose. God always does what he does according to his purpose, eh? to his intent. Then now unto the principalities and powers in, in heavenly places might be known by the church, the body of Christ, the manifold wisdom of God, according to what? To the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. My dear friend, the number one thing is you need to get saved by grace. Which means you need to trust, confide, put all your confidence, all your faith, all your trust in the fact that Christ died for our sins. That Christ was buried and Christ rose again the third day for our justification. You don't need to say a prayer. You don't need to confess your sins. You don't need to fast. You don't need to climb a holy mountain. You don't need to go uh, for and, and, you know, shake the hand of the pastor, whatever it is, in a congregation where practically they're preaching another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, as we read in Galatians. And they under a curse doing this. Because the will of God in this, the dispensation of grace of God, it will all men, it will have all men to be saved, number one, step number one, and come to the knowledge of the truth. You cannot come to the knowledge of this truth if you don't get first saved by grace through faith, no works whatsoever. Then, when you study, you start to see how wonderful, glorious this gospel is, the gospel of the grace of God, because the gospel of the grace of God is telling us that Christ has accomplished all that was necessary for the salvation, the eternal salvation of our soul. That's why when we believe this gospel, we are saved and sealed. As is written in Ephesians, in chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, in whom ye also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is not repent and be baptized, but believe that Christ died for your sins. He was buried, he rose again the third day for your justification. In whom also if you also after after you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You see? It's a gift, a gift upon gift upon gift upon gift, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perish possession unto the praise of his glory. I don't do these videos so that you think I'm such a great spiritual man. I don't do this video so that you come to my church. I haven't got any. <laughs> I'm a member of the body of Christ, but I don't have a particular assembly. Also, because where I am, people are playing religion right, left, and center, but they're not interested in listening to this glorious gospel of the grace of God. They want to do works and show off in church on Sunday morning and prove how good they are by tithing and praying out loud or oh, tongues, whatever it is, which is something really completely out of order. God is not the other confusion, like you see. Not only confusion, physical noise. I'm talking spiritually in the doctrine. The, the doctrine is very clear. The doctrine is like this. You and I are sinners. We are dead in trespasses and sins. There is no way that we can save ourselves by our own efforts, reforming ourselves by saying prayers, fasting or whatever. 
we need simply to acknowledge our condition and receive the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. And then we are saved and then we can study this word of truth, rightly divided, and discover that we are accepted in the beloved, all our sins are forgiven. No need to go on and confessing sins until we blew in the face. We don't need to be baptized in water to testify anything. The Holy Ghost baptizes us into the death of Christ. The death of Christ. <laughs> it's an operation of God. It's, it's a spiritual operation of God. You cannot quantify, you cannot smell it, touch it, feel it. Here with your ears is an operation of the Holy Ghost. God is invisible, but it's real. So, when you study this word of truth, rightly divided, and you start to rightly divide and, and see the mystery, the revelation of the mystery, what Christ has accomplished using Paul as an apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles, you start to, to have a, a reaction, I tell you, like, where have I been all those years? Why I didn't hear this before? Oh yes, I heard this by part. I didn't never stop and think that God has accomplished what, what was necessary for my salvation. I thought I had to do something. But don't get discouraged because this is what happens when we discover that the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of those who don't, do not, the unbelievers, so that the glorious gospel of the grace of God may not shine upon them and they might be saved by believing. But once you believe, the shackles will fall. You will receive the gospel of the grace of God. You will be in Christ for eternity. For eternity. I want to encourage you. I've been, I'm 70 now, I've been 40 years plus in religion. And I never pay attention to Romans 16.25 where it talks about preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret but now is made manifest. I never pay attention to 2 Timothy 2.15 when it says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Why? Because I was blinded by traditions, by the religions, by rituals, and by confidence in my flesh. But when you discover that you are absolutely, totally incapable to save yourself, there is nothing that you can do, say, or perform so that God looks at you with favor and blesses you. But has already done it by, the, by Christ. By the, the, the cross of Christ. Then when you believe this, then you're going to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For your grace and mercy. Which brings peace. As, and I finish with this. As is written in Romans 5.1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The verse before says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was, ready, was raised again for our justification. I hope that this encourages, helps you to understand that we are in the dispensation of the grace of God, as is written in Romans, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. 12. There is much more, but this is just a short message to encourage you. Grace and peace to all. Thank you very much.